How the mass murderer who murdered over My Little Pony. County 911, is anybody experiencing flu like or COVID-19 symptoms? No, somebody's shooting, somebody's shooting in my hub. I'm at FedEx in Plainsville. What's the address? And there's gunshots everywhere. Okay, what are you hurrying? What is the address? The address is 8951 Miraville Road. Can I get some band How many shots did you hear? I don't know. I don't know if anybody got shot. Can we go out down here? Can we run on way to the end and go out? Don't go outside. Stay where you're 8951 Miraville Road. I want you to stay with me, okay? Don't, don't hang up, okay? Shut that door! When a young boy's mother notices his odd behaviors, intensifying year by year, oh she begins to worry about him. Uh-oh. It began as a child when young Brandon Hole insisted on wearing three pairs of shorts at a time. That seemed innocuous enough until years later, when he developed an unusual obsession oh, that no. soon went off the rails. This was the bedroom of that same boy. Only now he was well into his teenage years and his true love is depicted on the colorful posters hanging on these walls. The cartoon ponies you see are the central characters on a children's animated television series, My Little Pony. Most people would do anything for the love of their life, but few knew just how far Brandon was willing to go for his. And the ones that did know would soon wonder how they didn't see the horrific outcome staring them right in the face. Yes, that was Applejack, face down, ass up. Hello? Hi, can I speak with Brandon, please? Oh, uh, yeah, this is Brandon. Brandon Hole was no stranger to tragedy. Oh, God. In this phone call with police, you'll quickly learn how his demons began to develop at such an early age. His mother, Sheila, estimates he was only four years old as she describes the dramatic incident you're about to hear. I mean, he had, like, be real depressed one day and be like, you know, I ought to just do what my dad did. How did his dad kill himself? Ooh. Damn. So, okay. Did he find him or did he see that? Uh, no, he was there when we got into a real bad argument and his dad said that, you know, hey, whatever, if you leave with the kids, I'm going to myself and I said, go ahead. Okay. He was, I think, four then. It seemed this haunting memory would follow Brandon oh my everywhere God. he went for the rest of his life. Before long, Sheila would see his struggles start to manifest in unusual behaviors, including his insistence on wearing three pairs of shorts at a time, the way he would rock back and forth as he watched television, and how if his routine tasks were interrupted, the whole sequence would begin again. He was eventually diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder. Yo. Sensing something was off, Sheila took her troubled son to Barrington Health Center in Indianapolis, but there she would learn there was more going on than she ever knew. The first visit in 2011, when Brandon was nine, would prove to yeah. be his first of many. But with every visit, the outcomes grew worse and worse. And ultimately, it all culminated in some of the most terrorizing moments ever caught on camera. Oh, Less God. than a year after being diagnosed with a bevy of disorders, including disruptive behavior disorder, anxiety, obsessive compulsive disorder, and depression, Brandon's behaviors would soon become much more aggressive. Thanks to his ever-increasing temper, his mother took him back for another visit one year later. Okay. As it turned out, his mother's fears were no exaggeration, and the medical records are damning evidence that prove it. From excessive lying to disrespectful behavior, Brandon's temper was now only part of a growing list of concerns. But for Brandon, it was just the beginning. It's May of 2013. Brandon is 11. A police officer was dispatched yo, to the yo, home yo, Sheila yo, and Brandon yo, shared yo, yo, with yo, Sheila's yo. boyfriend, Keith Larson. According to Keith, he and Brandon were engaged in a water fight, and when Keith sprayed him with the garden hose, Brandon flew into an unexpected rage. He'd locked himself in the bathroom where he proceeded to destroy items inside. What the hell? Sheila alleged that she picked the lock, after which Brandon left the bathroom and Sheila became his target. That's when Brandon snapped. He punched and slapped Sheila in the face multiple times, kicked her in the legs and bit her on the forearm. She followed as he ran for the kitchen and grabbed two table knives oh out God. of the drawer. Then, in a mad scramble, charged at his own mother. He trapped her in the family room and wouldn't allow her to leave. It seemed like something unthinkable was about to happen. But just when she thought there was no escape, police arrived in the nick of time, and the madness for now came to an end. 
Somehow, Jesus. Sheila only sustained a small wound to her right forearm, but her fears about her son's behavior leading up to this point had been all but confirmed. The incident ended in Brandon receiving... I feel like at this point, you just get your kid out of there and he has to go to like a home. ...in several months of probation. After That's that it? incident with his mother, everything continued in the same direction, and every year, Brandon would ascend another step on that stairway to madness. He quit school in 2014 and never got beyond the sixth grade level. Anyone with only one monitor is insane. He stayed home, his depression ever present, and isolated from the world, worsening Yo, Gap, his Gap. condition. It seemed to manifest in his chilling search history. You've already learned about his obsession with My Little Pony, no. but while left alone, Brandon had been researching something far more sinister. In 2015, Brandon was assessed by the Riley Children's Foundation. His search history included an obsessive interest in mass shootings. He told the assessor that, quote, I feel bad for the victims, the families. When asked if he could put himself in the shoes of the perpetrators, he denied it, saying, I don't want to waste my time doing something like that. It's a hassle. And that he wouldn't want to cause families any trauma. Chillingly, the assessor concluded that Brandon seemed to empathize with the victims, despite the fact that he also admitted to sharing memes and jokes about them with his friends. Then, the day came when 18-year-old Brandon made the decision to follow through with something he'd planned to do for quite some time. It was March 2nd, 2020. He was like, well, drive me to the gun store and I'll just look around. On the way to the gun store, we saw a sticker that said, hashtag stop the life. Uh -huh. And he's like, huh, there's your sign. And I was like, hmm, okay, well, if you buy a gun, there's your sign. You know, I got to take that away from you. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah, so don't and bring he the did store. buy it without bullets. The why store you, was out of ammunition you, that day. That night, Sheila and her daughter gun? devised a plan. The situation was far too perilous, and they couldn't just sit back and watch to see what became of it. They had to act. If not, Sheila feared, perhaps Brandon would follow through and take his own life, just as his father had done several years prior. Or something much, much worse. The following morning, they traveled to the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department, and filed a case report telling of his troubled past and how okay. he planned to point his shotgun at police, thereby ensuring his death. Oh Later God. that same day, on March 3rd, several officers and members of the Indianapolis Mobile Crisis Assistance Team, or MCAT, responded to Sheila's home. Upon entering, Brandon was placed in handcuffs, with the police report stating that Brandon had become quite anxious, and his main focus was ensuring that no one looked at his computer. What police would find on that computer would leave Sheila utterly shocked, with the search revealing extremist websites in his history. At this time, Brandon's gun was confiscated under Indiana's red flag law. When Brandon was taken to Eskenazi Hospital for further assessment, she hoped he'd be put on a 72-hour hold. But instead, somehow, he was in and out in under two hours. To Sheila's utter surprise, an emergency medicine doctor determined there was no diagnosis, I wonder and how that Brandon doctor denied now. having any issues. What's more shocking, there's no record that indicates a formal psychological assessment. Here come the EU viewers saying N.A. There it is. I knew it was coming. Of course, N.A. Go ahead, do your thing. ...was ever conducted on Brandon during this visit, despite Sheila's cries for help. A few days after yeah, the visit to Eskenazi this is the Hospital, Hospital you lose. I'm a detective lie. contacted the Sheila concerning his confiscated shotgun. I just needed to talk to you about uh, what happened with Brandon. My role in this is simply just to see if we're going to file a retention case. If they file a retention case, he would also be uh, deemed to be a dangerous person, which only yeah, means that he wouldn't be able to purchase a firearm. Why would you bring this him there in the first criminal place? Record, and it's not, you can't even see it. Like if somebody were to search for, for criminal cases and stuff, these cases yeah. don't go into there because they're just civil. Once they get filed, like if I needed to check on one, um, I can't even do it. I have to send an email to the prosecutor's office and ask them to look because they're the only ones that can access it. So to see like what the status of it is. Then when the FBI visited with Sheila the following month, they would unknowingly add fuel to the fire. An agent along with another officer visited Sheila's home and asked to meet with Brandon. When the agent asked Brandon what he planned to do with his life, Brandon replied that perhaps he could join the FBI. In response, the agent made it clear that wouldn't be an option for him. Perhaps this was the straw that broke the camel's back. 
It would be exactly one year to this very day that Brandon would unleash the inner demons he'd been harboring since early childhood. At the conclusion of the meeting, all intelligence that had been gathered on Brandon revealed the last thing Sheila or any mother would ever want to hear about their own son. Brandon had all the makings of a mass shooter. Some of the red flags that the FBI may have recognized in Brandon were that he was a loner with feelings of rejection from society, as well as feeling like he was being treated unfairly, and his belief that he was a victim. Other red flags that Brandon showed were his symptoms of depression, homicidal thoughts, violent fantasies, and anger problems. In conjunction with the other warning signs were his traits of narcissism, mm. and most concerning of all, his fixation on past school shootings and mass murderers. Despite the exchange with the FBI agent, Brandon, for a time, seemed to be on the up and up. Okay. He found a job in 2020, and he seemed to enjoy working at the local FedEx Smart Post facility. Maybe this was the no, new this beginning the Sheila had hoped for after all those arduous years. Maybe Brandon was finally improving. But it wasn't the case. And in fact, he was only just ascending into peak madness. In the months before he would do the unthinkable, Brandon quit showing up for work. It seemed he couldn't bring himself to get out of bed. By October, his stint at the FedEx facility had officially come to an end. Oh, it was mid-March of 2021, and Brandon had moved back to his mother's home. Once again, Sheila had to fight the system in order to get her son in front of a mental health professional before he was finally assessed. Multiple pages of notes named a variety of Brandon's conditions, amongst them generalized anxiety disorder. I mean, it, it seems like the mom's at least trying to do something, but she definitely should just not got on that gun. Recurrent major depressive disorder. Meanwhile, even while he was in therapy, this is an actual list of the items he was purchasing. What is this? Lucas Oil Extreme Duty Gun Oil. Adapter Black. Sling Attachment. Vertical Grip. Grip Black. It's NA Grocery List. Dude, shut up. As he was making these purchases, he attended another session with a social worker. But by now, Brandon had reached the point of no return. The following yeah, day, he attended a session with a different social worker, stating he had no empathy and no care for the lives of others, uh -huh. including his own flesh and blood. Two weeks later, in what would be his final counseling session, he stated the same thing again. But what he added this time was chilling. Brandon claimed he was a danger to society and that society should fear him. And he was right. Marion County 911. There's been a shooting. Okay. Multiple shots. How many shots are fired? A lot. It started the night Brandon quietly departed home, never to return again, en route to his final destination, the FedEx Smart Post facility, sometime around 11 p.m. on April 15th, 2021. That particular evening was nothing out of the ordinary. Sheila returned home from work with dinner for Brandon and found... Jesus fucking Christ. Can your camera a bit smaller? I'm trying to watch the video. You have a Princess Luna... pillow right there. ...found him to be in a pleasant mood. After he ate, he took a relaxing bath, then they both went to bed. Or, so hey, Sheila miss. thought. I just in the Once girl. inside the FedEx yes. Smart Post facility, Brandon makes his way through, savagely opening fire on everyone in his path. Then he moves through the lobby, assassinating employees at random as they attempt to run for their lives. Jesus. Soon after, he returns to the parking lot and immediately opens fire on those unfortunate enough to be in close proximity. 911 calls flood local dispatchers as Brandon continues his murderous undertaking. I think there's possibly multiple shooters. I hear them outside. I'm in the control room. There's three of us in here. Okay, so what I need for you guys to do is like, stay down, make shooting. sure your door is sure. locked. Put something against that door if you can to keep yourself safe, okay? Please. Is anyone scared? Okay, they're on the way. They're on the way. In a matter of minutes, the premises transformed into a nightmare. 
There's somebody out in the parking lot with a rifle shoot that we got the guy in here. We got him in here. That's, he's been shot. Okay. He's going to be in our shack with us. Hey, hey, stay on the line for me. Let me get medics on the phone. I'm not going to hang up, okay? Stay with me. There is at least one person down. Uh, it's in an ambulance or two, please. Yeah, we have the ambulance again. and the officers in route. But they have an AR-15. I'm not sure how many other guns they have, but I know they at least have one assault rifle. They're still shooting. Okay, I, okay, stay on the line. Still, they're already on the way to you, okay? <laughs> but stay on the line with me. Keep, your, keep yourself safe. I need you to let me know anything that happens, okay? <laughs> Wait, no, I just hear a lot of gunshots and a lot of people. Okay, okay, hold on. Stay on the line. The emergency calls continue to pour in as the casualties are mounting. Dispatchers frantically assist callers as the horror continues to unfold. We have shots fired, shots fired. We need police. Ah, uh, they're still shooting as we speak. He's already shot about five God people. God damn, get the police though. You said there were Sorry. five people shot there? Or he yes. got... The first officers are arriving at the scene. Dispatchers and responding officers communicate in real time. However, in the midst of the chaos, details are not yet clear. Have we confirmed whether we have one or two shooters? Reports are saying two shooters. Okay, is, is it one person, two person? Can't tell. It's just multiple rifle shots, but it sounds like the same report, so I'm assuming one. Okay, are they inside or outside? Last well, they were outside. Okay. I'm getting information that he is still inside the building from somebody pulling off the lot. Footage reveals that after carrying out his plan, Brandon returned to an earlier location in the FedEx facility. Without so much as a shred of hesitation, he then proceeded to end one more life, his own. Employees on site continue to place calls, begging and pleading for help in this surreal nightmare that has been sprung upon them without warning. As far as they are aware, the shooter is still preying on victims. Is there some place you can get safe? I want you to stay safe, okay? I don't know because I still hear guns. Okay. The is, is there some place you can hide? Is there a, a desk, something you can get under? Yeah. Yep. I'm at door 235. There is a trailer on this door. Get under. Slide under that. Some place where you can Slide stay under, safe, please. okay? <laughs> really well, okay? Stay with me, okay? As Natasha and another employee remain hidden, well over a hundred officers no. are dispatched to the scene. Holy shit. Two more down, car and parking lot, white Toyota Camry. Another one down by Silver Explorer, front row. Control, advise Eskenazi will have multiple patients. Advise them to be ready. I'm outside the lobby. I had to get all the people out. He couldn't get through the turnstiles, but he was sticking the gun through. So when he went out to the parking lot, I rushed everybody back through our third turn, our second set of turnstiles and sent them into trucks. Is there a certain entrance number or door that we can note here in the run so they know where to get to you? And how I mean, yeah, this kid's a pussy. Obviously. Well, I mean, I look, I know people are like, oh, Brody's. Obviously, it's nothing to do with Brody's. It's just on top of it, he's a Brody. But it's just, Jesus Christ. I, I, the mom should not have let the kid get a gun. But also, uh, I mean, the kid was wearing three pairs of pants. How many people are with you? Through. I can get the cops through. Uh-oh, somebody's at the door out there. Is that a police officer or is it him again? It's a police officer. It's a police officer. Judy encounters the officers as they make their way through the building oh, to secure the, best the scene. In the entire world. Dispatchers check in with callers who have remained on the lines. The officers, the officers know where you are, okay? I've put that in there, okay? okay. Do you want to stay on the line with me until yes, you get there? Please don't leave me. Okay. Yes. I'm not going to leave you. I will not leave you then, okay? I'm going to stay with you, you then, okay? You're fine, okay? That's perfectly fine. After more than 30 minutes with the dispatcher, Natasha's wait is over. Help! 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 I'm under. I'm under. Allegedly, because of the facility's policy that employees couldn't carry cell phones in certain I mean, areas, some workers really may do. not have been able she to phone for help or contact friends and family child, during the shooting. Like you. The killing spree had come to an end. But the aftermath of the attack is difficult to fathom. He shot so many people. Oh my God, he got Uncle, and Uncle's only been here a week. They're dead out here. Eight innocent, unwitting victims' lives ended abruptly. Soon, Brandon is located by officers as they confirm that he is now deceased. It was then that Brandon's disturbing motive was revealed. 
Brandon was heartbroken over a My Little Pony character. In his final Facebook post on April 15, 2021, he wrote, I hope that I can be with Applejack in the afterlife. My life has no meaning without her. If there's no afterlife and she isn't real, then my life never mattered anyway. But I kind of just need to talk to you about what happened that day and how you're feeling about uh, whether you'd want it back or if you... Oh, you know, sorry, to, sorry okay. to interrupt, but, okay. but I don't I don't want it back at all. It's fine. What would be your goal for us to do with the, with the gun? Uh, just, just destroy it or... Okay. Well, yeah, I'd say that because okay. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about uh, getting my life back on track. I, I don't have any mental health issues that I'm aware of. I, I don't think I do. Uh, and I wouldn't say depressed, um, but my feelings to the, the reason why I got a gun is because I wanted to show my best friend who's really into hunting and stuff, uh, mainly also for like the fun of shooting it. I mean, if you're getting it back yeah. on track, I don't know what it's off track of it unless it's just that you yeah. didn't get your well high school diploma. I mean, yeah, well, I mean, off track. I mean, yeah, it's well, yeah, it's bad. I mean, I'd say. That, I mean, do you think this like not doing anything with your life is on track? I mean, I don't think. Well, no, not. I. But I also think that could make. Jesus Christ. Make me sad and depressed. I, I get why Apple felt like a failure down, or whatever, but apparently that's not what you're feeling. So. Like I just signed up for GED. I'm going to get my GED. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm going to counseling or therapy or I'm not really sure what the correct term is. Yeah. And uh, I'm gonna try to get my life back on track. And I'm really trying hard. The FBI concluded Brandon's purpose was to demonstrate his masculinity and capability while fulfilling a final desire to experience killing people. Yikes. It was a moment in time that further re Hope he gets better. Were you not listening? Reinforced the importance of not only recognizing red flags, but acting upon them too. Those eight lives that were lost that day ranged in age from 19 years to 74 years and include Matthew Alexander, Samaria Blackwell, Emerjeet Johal, Joswinder Kaur, Joswinder Singh, Emerjeet Sekhan, Carly Smith, and John Weissert. Brandon's mother wants her son to know that when she cries these days, it's not for him, it's for the victims. If she could talk to him today, she'd say, I grieve those people more than I ever will you. Damn. El mom? Where's the L mom in that? What are you talking about in general? Listen, you can't know the entire story in 20 minutes. We don't know. Yes, mom brought, her, brought him to get a gun. Absolutely terrible. Absolutely terrible. I wonder how she feels. Her son was a mass murderer, and she literally told her husband if... I wouldn't care if you die, and then he literally died. That's crazy. I don't think we can get to a you laugh, you lose right after this. I will be honest with you. I, I just don't see it. I think we need to watch one more video to get into a you laugh. There's no way I can go from this to a you laugh, you lose. I'm sorry, man. It's just not happening.